how to replace a horse box floor. Just bought this horse box, three and a half tanner, realized the corner was a bit soft and we've decided to rip it all up because as you can see, it needs changing. Didn't spot this when I bought it, unfortunately. Um, but later on, then we felt this corner was just a little bit soft walking on it and I spotted it from underneath. Probably didn't look at this place because the ramp was in the way. But now we've got the aluminium sheet up. That was a bit of a job. See it over there. Bent in the process of getting it up. And what was really useful was this uh, crowbar type thing. It's used for making holes for fence posts. So look up online. I'll try and put some links in the buying description for where to get those sort of things. Basically ram it underneath and peel up the aluminium because it was uh, stuck down with tar or magic rubber. Once that is up, then I drill through some rivets that are holding the board onto the chassis. And next thing is to get a circular saw, set it to about uh, whatever the thickness of the board is, 18 mil. Cut through and rip it all up. Quick fast forward. That's the old piece of uh, wood, rotten wood, cut out and removed. And this is a new piece of structural hardwood ply. The best price uh, I could get was from Travis Perkins. It was about 60 quid for a four foot by eight foot plank, 18 millimeter, which matches the original. Uh, structural and hardwood, so it was uh, extra strong compared to softwood plies. Decided to also reinforce the side. This is uh, a 12 mil ply on top of the original walling of the van. Um, it's a bit of a compromise between strength and weight. I think uh, that was the right compromise for us. What we were keen to do was improve the waterproofing and sealing around the edge. So you see poking out around the bottom there's bits of aluminium. Um, what I'm going to do is get some two metre lengths of aluminium angle section, which is like this. Um, one along the bottom, uh, those are just trial fitting. One along the top and put it behind the board, behind the ply, so you won't see it. The reason for that is that the strength of this wall uh, is not hugely supported by this reinforcing bar. So they've put the bar on the horse side and this plank is just attached by a few screws going through from the driver's cab. Obviously with a lot of weight on this ply could easily push it away from this reinforcing bar. So with the aluminium angle sections, I'm going to rivet it uh, onto the um, steel bar from underneath and uh, this part is uh, will be hidden behind the board and will be supporting the board so then when this board tries to move in that direction basically the rivets which are at a right angle so will be quite strong and be a lot of them will be firmly supporting it against the uh, steel square section bar that's going across and uh, similarly around the bottom so you can see the angle section breaking out that supports this board. This will be screwed down into the lower board, so the lower board will then be holding the sideboard, preventing it from moving forward, and giving it a great deal of strength. And you've got double the strength that you had originally. This was probably something like a 12 mil board on here. Hard to see, but uh, I think by the fact that the window doesn't completely go to the edge of the board, it indicates it's probably 12 mil. It's not hugely strong, so I've got another section or another um, sheet of 12 mil, making 24 mil in total, which is very strong. Uh, what also happened, because the floor rotted um, underneath there, it also spread up the side wall as well. So this wall section was very thin. So after trial fitting the new wood, uh, I took it out and painted it on both sides with this rather nice uh, waterproofing paint two coats on each side, same with the sign wood as well. Uh, see the video description for buying links for the paint. Uh, so it ends up with the best of both worlds. So you've got the waterproofing of the phenolic type ply and the strength of a hardwood ply. So I think that's the best combination. But you can see I've got my metal in place, top and bottom. Just got to do some riveting, uh, taking care to seal underneath the metal as well with some MS polymer sealant. So that corner now is uh, well waterproofed. And of course it's gonna have rubber strips, these ones on top of it as well. It's a nice strong 
floor, 18 mil is enough in this case, especially hardwood, because uh, the distance between the strength and the metal is not too great. Riveting the floor onto the chassis is going to be a lot stronger than the screws, and if you've never done riveting before, it's pretty easy. Of course, you need a pop rivet gun and some rivets, you get those on eBay and the like. Just drill a hole in the floor through to the wood. A cobalt steel drill bit is the best one to go for. Again, eBay is your source. Then you rivet in, rivet gun on the top. Squeeze down on the handle a few times, that pulls up on the pin. Eventually, the pin snaps, and you can pull it out, and the rivet is formed. There you go, a couple more pumps. Get that pin out, and there you go, take the pin out, there's your strong rivet. So that's a nice number of rivets along the top bar, similar on the bottom bar, a couple of different sizes, don't worry about that. Then I'm going to seal in some obvious gaps, start doing it here with polymer sealant. Do that along the bottom of the sides, around the front edge, in between the two boards. And then we're going to cover it with a layer of this tanking membrane, which is like a liquid rubber stuff. And while it's still wet, we're going to put our aluminium sheet back down, screw it back down. A few more screws this time, I'm actually reusing the old uh, piece of aluminium, because it's about 200 pound a sheet. It's about the best price I can get for an 8x4 roughly sheet. So um, I try to flatten out the old one, and uh, with more screws, hopefully it'll flatten down a bit better. Uh, it doesn't matter too much because big thick rubber mats go on the top of that. So yeah, nearly done. The walls are going to be covered in the original rubber as well. So none of this you can actually see, but it's lovely and strong now. So you've got a total of 24 mil of ply, good half fit hardwood ply as well. So nice and strong and it's well attached to the metal bar at the top. Much better than it was previously. That's the aluminium floor back down. Uh, quite flat, but a lot more screws on than was on there originally to flatten it out. And uh, messing around with the ceiling on the front here. Not very pretty at the moment, but I'll tidy that up. And just put some little upstands of polymer sealant on there stop the water getting in from the gap in the door and of course eventually rotting the floor uh, see that bright blue stuff that's the uh, tanking membrane sealant i think if i did it again i use a quicker setting one that i used before for waterproofing roofs um, that one goes off and reacts with moisture in the atmosphere whereas this one relies on um, the moisture in the membrane evaporating and drying out, which also is a bit slow, especially this time of year where it's very wet and cold. Uh, so that's all our rivets on our bracket holding that reinforcing board nicely. It's nice and strong. So all we've got to do now is put the rubber mats on the wall, on the floor, and job finished. So relatively straightforward if you want to put in the effort. And a lot cheaper and quicker than getting somebody else to do it that manufactures horse boxes. And that's the mats and the partition back in. Job finished. The mats fit a lot better than they did originally. Because uh, I moved that front edge a little bit further back and trimmed them to fit properly. And it helps keep the water out. So um, that's the job done. Quite a few days of work, but saved a lot of money. And we think done a better job than we are. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Cheers, bye.